see if we can get in there. Go on live, you're live. Okay. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Rapid Fire Golf. We're getting started a little bit earlier um, today than normal. And hopefully you guys didn't miss too much uh, last week or missed us too much last week. We didn't obviously had uh, some technical difficulties into our session. As you can see, we are here out at the range. Uh, I'm going to try and get this working outside. So fingers crossed, working on some uh, new internet connection uh, systems for us. I think we found a solution for us out here. We can actually hit balls out on the range. So uh, fingers crossed again, 2019, we're, we're figuring out. Um, for those of you that have been here before, you know the deal, post up questions. Let's, uh, let's chat. We'll rock and roll. For everyone who's new, you post up questions. I will uh, rapid fire-ish uh, answer them, and then we will uh, rock and roll and hopefully produce a better situation here outside versus inside. So uh, welcome. Let's rock and roll. We have a question. Mr. Barry, uh, I have a Calvin Pete left arm somewhat. Uh, elbow is naturally up. Any thoughts? I have a Calvin Pete left arm too. I don't know if you can see my scar there across there. So I actually can't straighten my left arm all the way and it doesn't go perfectly straight, um, which is interesting to kind of work around. When you say your elbow is naturally up, yeah, you have the same sort of thing as me. Uh, what, what, yeah, so I mean, I, I think I've had some of those same issues. I think it depends on exactly how your left arm is. Like for me, you can see my arm doesn't straighten all the way. You see it doesn't go all the way full 90 and then it's actually bent in space. So when I bring my lead arm up, my like lower part of my arm really should be higher than that. Uh, I haven't really found that affecting too many things that I had to make a, a huge amount of adjustments with. I would say for you, whatever sort of big picture things you have to do with your swing, you would have to fix. Like for me, uh, no, I, I, Barry, I wouldn't change anything just from that. I would need to see a video of your swing to say, hey, you know, maybe your face is too open, you missed the ball to the right, fat, thin, whatever. But just based on that left arm alignment, I wouldn't necessarily change anything. Um, I'd have to, uh, I just want to see your, your video and kind of see what the other stock pieces are. Um, okay. David T what's up? What's up, Darren? Not sure how to control my wrist in the swing, Darren. Luckily for you, we just did a video today on, uh, how to use your wrists in the golf swing, um, which talks about that. Now, when you say Darren, not sure how to control your wrist Darren, what do you mean? Do you mean the, the hinging portion, the radial ulnar part or the flexion extension part? The wrist angles and, and what you're going to do obviously are relative to your grip and then it kind of depends how much you want to hinge or flex extend depends on club face swing direction etc et so darren if you give me a little more specific with that i can uh, help uh, that uh let's see what's your take on functional instruction uh, instruction versus positional instruction uh, my take is that the best way to go would be for me or another coach to see someone in front of them or on video have a baseline information about that person what their biggest miss is what kind of ball flight pattern they want to be able to hit, et cetera. Watch them swing, pick out the one, two, three, four, four biggest priorities that they need to focus on and hammer those until you get them, not get super focused on the micro and figure out the big pictures. Eliminate a miss, kind of have a one ball pattern, learn how to control distance, learn how to have a wedge distance control system, chip putt, et cetera. So um, how you get there, if you do that in a positional sense or not, I think there's a lot of ways to get stuff done. Some people kind of want to know where the club is in space. I think usually have better chance or um, kind of better results with people when it's more dynamic. So maybe you're hitting a position in a movement, but more of a movement, more of a feel-based thing probably than positions. But sometimes positions can serve as good, uh, good checkpoints. Uh, I don't know if I answered that question or not, but that was my take. John, hi, Eric. Thanks. Or sorry. Hi, Eric. For how long past impact should the lead arm be straight before it starts to fold? So it depends on how much side bend you have, and it depends on how much rotation you have. The more oh, oh, rotation you have, or body rotation in this direction, toward, ooh, it's pretty cool outside, that, you, that I have towards the target, the more my body gets open, the longer I can keep my arms extended. So if I keep turning, 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 my arms will be extended all the way out until about um, here. If I don't rotate as much at some point, like if I stop rotating here, I hit a point where I can only extend to about there and then they start to fold. What you'll see is guys like Dustin Johnson or guys that have a lot of rib cage and upper body rotation will have the arm straight all the way to about past uh, parallel to the ground, the follow through. And then other guys who don't turn as much will have more lead arm uh, folding. It'll stay against the chest more and more lead arm stability. So it really depends on how much side bend and rotation you have. The more rotation side bend, the, the longer they'll stay straight um, into the follow through. If not, it'll fold more. Kind of the older you get, the less flexible, the less rotation, the more I would get that lead arm 
rotating and supinating more and kind of play for that pattern. Whereas if you can open up more, then uh, you can keep them straighter longer. Uh, Warren, have a severe left side dip at the start of transition. Your thoughts are drill. So a left side dip, if you're saying like here at the top, that your left shoulder and upper body lock go forward. I like So at the top of your swing, your left hip should be lower than your right hip. Your left shoulder should be lower than your right shoulder at the top of the swing. This should be lower than this. This should be lower than this. In transition, they should stay lower. Now, if you have a dip, the only reason that would be bad is if you go too far forward with your head. So if my left shoulder and my hip go down, but my head goes along with it, then I'm going to be too far forward, usually too steep. What needs to happen is as my left shoulder and my left hip stay lower, I add right side bend to keep my head centered. You see that there? I add right side bend to keep that centered. If you're talking about a dip in terms of lowering, that's a good thing. If you watch some of our older videos, almost everyone at the top of their swing will lower some amount in transition as the legs change flex, as you add side bend and turn, that's normal. If you're talking about your head moving forward, that can be a problem with getting too steep. You'd wanna add right side bend to that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, from Central PA near State College. Would love to get lessons from you, but not sure how that could work. In all of the YouTube videos, Mary puts a link underneath that has like acuity scheduling, it's called. Um, all of the stuff's in there. The bad news for the issue for us is availability. Like I probably don't have anything until like October. Um, I do have a couple spots in golf schools in September, October-ish. But um, if not, in the meantime, if you check out GoronoGolf.com, same thing for Barry Below. If I say to you that I want to see your video or I need to see your video, all of that now is done through CogornoGolf.com. If you guys check that out, there's different layers of membership. I would do the premium one where you get access to our Facebook group and you get all the master class and everything for um, included in that membership for 39 bucks. That's where, I, Barry, you should send your video. And then um, P. Miller, I'm not sure your first name is, but if you would, you want to join that in the meantime until we can come see you, uh, you can come see us in person. That would be uh, beautiful. Uh, let's see, Pete. About right elbow, okay, question about right elbow to hip connection and downswing. Can you differentiate between those that get right elbow beside hip, Rory Fleetwood, Stenson, and those that get in front of hip coming in the back? Sure. So where the elbow is relative to the hip is primarily dictated by if your trail shoulder is internally rotated or externally rotated. If I do that here, here's a neutral arm position. Here's a neutral arm position. Here's a neutral arm position. Here's internally rotated. Okay, see how that goes away from my hip? That's internally rotated. Here's externally rotated. See how that gets in front of it? There's externally rotated in front of it. So where my hip is, if I wanna get my elbow in front of my hip more, I need to have more of an externally rotated trail shoulder and arm. What dictates that? Grip, club face, pivot. So Dustin Johnson's got a closed club face, right? Strong grip, good wrist, closed club face. If he wants to hit a ball at a target, he's gotta get his elbow in front just to keep that club, right? If he's got that face shut down, he's got to get his elbow way in front to prevent the ball from going drastically left. Guys usually that have more of a neutral club face alignment will have their arm more on their side because they have a face that needs to get more square. Like a Rory will have it on his side and then he just opens up a lot with it. Where it is in space is really relative to if your trail shoulders internal and externally. It also depends at the top. Guys that get flying right elbows usually have the right arm more on the side, whereas guys that keep it more tucked usually have it more in front. So it just all depends on where you have it going back, depends on the club face grip, side bends, no black and white answer. I would say people confuse where it is in space, internal, external, like this or this, with trying to get abduction or adduction, adduction this way. You don't want to be trying to get your right arm like jammed by your hip. They don't get their right elbow in front of their hip by abduction, adduction, by pulling it in this way as much. It's more so external, internal, like that. Whether or not you should do any of that, I have no idea. I'd have to see, have to see your uh, swing here. Excuse a little jiggle. Uh, uh, let's see. Mark, with the driver, what is a good feel for getting weight transferred forward without getting steep angle of attack and not trying to hit up on the ball? Ball position aside, with the driver, what's a good feel for getting weight transferred forward without getting steep? So it all depends on where your head is at in space and not trying. Uh, and not trying to hit up on the ball. Mark, what I would do, I'm not sure exactly what you mean. What, what, what would you, what would be a good feel for getting the weight transferred? Get the pressure into your left foot without your head moving forward. How you would do that is through right side bend. So as you put the pressure into your left foot, you want to add in a little bit of a right ab crunch and that's what keeps you centered. See the difference there? Here's me putting pressure in my lead foot with no side bend. 
here's me putting pressure into the foot with a side bend. I stay more centered. We did a video on how to keep your head behind the ball or stay behind the ball um, to hit it higher and farther a couple weeks ago. If you search our recent videos, um, you'll, you'll see that kind of went over that in more detail. Uh, Eric, on the takeaway, any drill on not bending left elbow before the downswing? Um, on the takeaway, any drill on not bending left elbow before the downswing? So how much you bend your left arm or not, or whether you should or shouldn't bend it or straighten or not, depends on a couple of things. The biggest influencer on whether you could keep your arm straight or not is how much you turn. If I make a backswing and I don't turn my body enough, I need to at some point bend my arms to get it up over my, my shoulder. Whereas if I have a big enough turn, I don't need to do that now. I can keep my arms straighter on the way down, on the way through here like this. Um, if it's an elbow structure issue, you can use something like a tour striker smart ball like this and put this between your elbows and keep the distance between your elbows the same, which will help keep some more width with your arms as you go back. If you normally don't turn, you'll really feel like you have to turn a lot more for that. But I don't think it's completely necessary you keep your arm um, straight, but that would be kind of where I would look at with that. Uh, Neil, what's a good drill to keep the upper body to stay behind the ball during the downswing? I would say the same thing I just said to Mark about right side bend. And then we did a video, um, I think it's called how to keep, how to stay behind the ball or how to keep your head. We do so many, I don't remember the titles, but it was like how to stay behind the ball or keep your head behind the ball. We did it like a week or two ago, man. I don't know if you remember. It was like how to keep your head behind the ball or how to stay back. Um, something like that. That'll explain that. Um, Neil, that'll explain that in more, in more detail. Uh, what should the right shoulder do in the downswing? Uh, and I'm not sure what that first name is, but it, we did a, if you search my name and uh, right shoulder uh, for this question, you'll see a couple of videos. What the right shoulder should do, if I'm doing my normal setup, my right shoulder as I turn works behind me and up. My left shoulder works down and in. My right shoulder works up and back to the top. And then as I start down, my right shoulder works back down and then back in front of me. During my downswing, my right shoulder has to get back in front of me. It, it, it's, there's right side bend, and then there's rotation. If I just side bend, my right shoulder goes lower and back. If I just rotate, my right shoulder goes forward. So you have to pair those together. You have right side bend to make it go more down, and then you have the rotation to make it go forward. How much you need to feel that's relative to where you are at the top, ball flight pattern, et cetera. But search my name in right shoulder, and then I go through that more specifically. Um, what do you think of Matthew with swing? Obviously, very, yeah, I mean, dude just won a PGA Tour tournament like his third or four starts. Obviously, he's a tremendous player, won NCAAs. You know, he's he's clearly got more of the club head working out and then looping back under than what you would traditionally see. But it, it's a really good way to add speed. I mean, the kid has like 130 mile per hour club head speed, bombs all of the shots, and he's got a great short. I mean, he just won a PGA Tour tournament. Um, you know, would I, would I get someone that far out? Probably not. But I mean, if it's, if you've been steep your whole life and you're usually like, if you're someone who's too far in early and over this way, it'd be probably good to feel some kind of this, right. As you work back down and under just to find center, or if you can do it like him, then, uh, then that works. Lots of speed, uh, for sure. Roman found out that if I tee off with the ball towards my front foot, the ball either goes left or right. So I started taking off of the ball in the center of my stance. It works for me. That's cool. Is it wrong? It's not wrong if it works. I'd have to see your swing. I have to see if that ball position is actually where you think it is and what other parts of the um, swing are causing that. I could, if, I, if I saw it, I could tell you in like two seconds, but I need to see it. Uh, Michael, can you give an example of how your head position at address affects your swing? Sure. Your head position at address is primarily dictated by how much tilt or how many times have I said right side bend today? So if I have like a wedge, I want very little tilt. Say I'm setting up for a wedge. I don't want a lot of tilt with a wedge because my angle attack's gonna be more down. I don't want a lot of tilt. Seven or eight iron, I'm gonna have a little bit of tilt, maybe two, three, four degrees. Driver, I'm gonna have like 10 degrees of tilt. The primary thing that tilt does is the more I tilt or the more my head is back at address, the easier it is to shallow it out or um, swing, hit more um, shallow, angle of attack, more from the inside. And number two, the more the, my path is easier from the right. If I go uh, with a lot of tilt, it's easier to swing shallow and from the inside. If I go the other way, like too steep of a setup, that would make me want to hit more down. That would make me want to hit more steep and more down. So you want to have a little bit of tilt, tilt what kind of control where your head is at. And then you want to lose some of that, right? So I'm tilted at address. I lose that, replace it with left side bend on the way back and then I regain right side bend on the way down and then into the follow through. So 
yeah, the head, the head at address is primarily going to control angle of attack and swing direction. It doesn't guarantee anything, but it's part of it. Uh, Mark, Eric, look at your open lessons. You're booked months out. I know, man. Supply and demand, baby. Um, yeah, I honestly, I would do cornergolf.com, put your swing up. If I see a video of your swing, I can tell you the main priorities and how to fix them in like two seconds, maybe like five minutes, but like two seconds when I watch it, but it'll take me a little bit to type it out. Uh, David, does Dustin Johnson keep and hold the same amount of bow in the wrist with top of his swing through impact? No. So all good golfers are going from whatever wrist position they have towards extension, all of them. So all of us are going from wherever we are. Let's say he's flex. He's going from flexion to extension. So he's going from flex towards extension. Now the key is, I'm just making up numbers here now. Let's say he's 20 degrees bowed. Now he's going from 20 degrees bowed to 10 degrees extended from let's say hip high to hip high. The key is as he's losing that flex or going towards extension, he's still, let's say he's going 20, he's 30 degrees bowed and now he's only 10 degrees bowed. So he went from 30 bowed to, again, I'm making shit up here, 30 bowed to 10 bowed. So he went 20 degrees towards extension, but he's still 10 degrees bowed at impact, and then he loses it past impact. That's really, we're all going towards extension. But amateur golfers who have not so good grips and club faces are too open, typically go towards extension too soon. That's why we always usually uh, teach to kind of put in the bow, add supination, and maybe add it later and exaggerate. Um, but they are going towards extension. No, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, thanks for the left dip. Actually, you are very welcome. Doug, any tips for a flop shot? When I open the club face completely, I noticed it points to the right. Yeah, so that's normal, Doug. I'd say when you're hitting a flop shot, a um, couple things I would do. Let's see if I can do my Mickelson. So flop shot, definitely you can open the face um, here. You can see it okay? Yeah, it's still pretty good. So face on, flop shot. Here would be like a normal chip shot. Ball back, kind of hands forward. Look at all my tilt I have. Okay, like right there. Flop shot, I'd go face open, would be like this. So open quite a bit. Like I have that open like quite a bit. Ball position would be forward. I want to avoid, a lot of people I see adding too much tilt because they're trying to let the ball in there. Keep your shoulders level, maybe even left side, left side lower. Like your leaning tower appease it to the left a little. Have your face open. The other thing I do from here is lower the handle. If I have the, the club pointed to the right and I lower the handle at address, here it's at my belt buckle, I'm lowering it like to my knee height. That makes the loft point more to the left. I'm also having a lot of knee bend and my feet are almost like a bunker shot. So I'm more crouched down, face is open, handles lower. In swing, I'm adding hinge and cup. I'm letting the club head release, adding speed and rehinging. So face open, handle lower here, hinge, let the club head release, rehinge would be the uh, flop shot, like so. You can't see that, but that was like in the hole there. Um, yeah, it'd be flop shot. Uh, Jim, hi Eric, welcome back, we missed you last week. I missed you guys too, man. Mary and I like to press for a whole week. Um, how do I keep depth in the downs? How do I keep depth in the downswing and drills? Yes, depth in the downswing, um, which I think we have a video coming out on maybe Wednesday. Yes. You wanna keep, Depth in the downswing in terms of where your arms and hands are here or here is primarily dictated by how far in your left arm is. If my left arm is more in, that's deep. If it's more out, that's not deep. Two things. One, keep your left bicep pressed against your left pec at the top and press it more against that in transition. If I'm at the top, my left bicep's pressed against my pec and it flies off of that, now I have no depth. If I'm at the top here like this, I want to press my left arm against my bicep in transition. You can also put something underneath your left uh, arm or armpit. So you take like a head cover and put it underneath your left armpit like this. And then when I go back, I wanna keep that in, press that pec in, keep that in, press that pec in on the way down. Those would be two feels. The other thing you have to keep in mind is depth is primarily dictated by turn. That is the more I turn back, the deeper I can go. The more I turn back, the deeper I can go. That also means in transition, if I'm here like this and I lose my turn right away or open my shoulders too quick relative to my hips and arms, I'm here. So I'm turn 90. By the time I get to left arm, let's say here's my full swing, turn 90. By the time I get to left arm parallel, I should only be 45 close with my, with my shoulders. See there? So if you don't turn back enough, 
or you turn too much early with your shoulders and chest, then you're gonna be uh, too far out in front too. Okay, let's see. Matt, Eric, working on the swing sequence and what you teach is spot on, thank you, sir. Now starting to see draw both in and outdoors, 400 is now 235, that's excellent. What's a better drill for using the ground for distance? Um, yeah, I think Matt, I, I would want to see what you're doing. Like if, if what you're currently doing would dictate a little bit of how I would answer that. Do you need to feel more during the backswing on how to do it on the way down? Um, if you look at, I have some footwork stuff in there. If you look at some of George Genghis' stuff, he's got a lot of really good stuff on the feet or Chris Como. Um, the general idea would be during the backswing, right? As I start down, I want my right foot to push clockwise. So from here, um, it's going to push this way. I want my right foot to feel like it's pushing in this direction. Boom, that way. That keeps my trail leg internal. Here's me at the top. I want to feel like my right foot pushes back and behind me as I start back down. If I do that, that keeps this leg external. At that point, I'm also pushing into my left heel, digging into my left heel so that I can push up and out. So it's almost like your feet are going to feel like they're pushing in opposite directions, kind of back and behind you early to grip it. Like it's really easy on this mat to feel that. You're gripping the ground. Like here, if I do this and I push these both out, I push both my feet out like that, I really can grip the ground. And then I can extend up and out uh, after that. So right foot kind of back behind you, left foot, same thing. Grip the ground, press opposite directions, and then use that to rotate from there. Uh, Larry, could you explain the importance in drills, how to use ground pressure effectively in your backswing and downswing? Gravy, I would say, yeah, perfect timing, kind of the same thing we just did there. How you do it on your backswing would be normal setup. I have pressure typically like 50-50, left foot, right foot. I got it on the balls of my feet, not heels, not toes. As I work back, I want to feel the pressure work a little towards my left toes and inside part of my left foot and a little bit more towards my right foot, inside part of my right foot in the middle or towards the heel. And then as you work down, that's the same thing for power. Now, what you want to feel specifically also depends on your shot pattern. If you're someone who hits, uh, let's say your slices the whole time, slice, 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 it might be beneficial for you to feel more right heel in, into the left toes to help get more inside. If you're someone who's inside and hits hooks, you might want to feel a little bit more into the left heel right off the bat. If you're someone who's looking for more rotation, you would want to feel more into the heel right off the bat and then extend that left leg up later. So kind of reflexing the left leg, reflexing the right leg in towards the heel, and then using that to straighten up afterwards would be the, uh, would be the general idea there. Joe. Uh, hey, Eric, you talk a lot about ball patterns. Can you share an example of a fade or draw ball pattern? Great video for Masterclass. Awesome. Thank you. So ball patterns, when we teach in person or online or in golf schools, um, the general idea with your full swing is that you need to have stock mechanics for solidness of contact. So you have a couple handful of priorities you're working on. The second thing you need to do is build the skill of ball pattern. Ball pattern just means the ball curves one way. It also means you eliminate misses. So like, let's say you have a draw pattern. If we have targets in the back, which we do very fancy, let's say this first flag right here is my target. You see the second flag to the right of it. That would be kind of my start line. And then this pole over here, let's say that's a gate. So from this, from this pole, let's see if I can put this in, from this pole to that, it's weird because it's backwards, to that flag, let's say would be my gate. So if I hit a draw, I wanna start every ball to the right every single time it's my start line window. I wanna curve every single ball to the left and then eventually I want them all to finish within that zone. So I never hit the ball left. And then if I have a fade pattern, I would pick that flag as my target and I'd pick a secondary flag over there and I'd say, that's my window. I wanna start every ball between there, curve them all right, never cross over the line. Now there's different ways to do that deal, but that would be the, the example of how you do that. You don't need to be able to do both. You need to have one that you can go to all the way through the bag. Same thing with the driver and then a backup shot. If you notice the pros on TV, they don't curve the ball a lot. Very little curve, very straight shots, um, very little curve, but having a go-to curve, not trying to do it both ways. No one on here should be trying to curve the ball both ways in the pins and shit. You should be playing one stock curve with not a lot towards the middle of the green. The higher your handicap, the more you want to curve it in the beginning, the lower your handicap, the more you want to take it off as you go. I uh, hope that helps. Mark. Na -na 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 uh, Mark, do you have a drill for moving driver strike on the face? Sure. Um, Mark, do you want to move it high, low, left, or right? Marcus, what's the best drill for rotation after doing 10 to 4 drill? 
Uh, the best thing would be to watch either our rotation masterclass or the early extension masterclass because I explain every body part in detail. We have practice plans in there. All of the masterclasses are on Podia. Maybe Mary can put a link on here. All of the masterclasses we sell separately on Podia, the rotation and the early extension one, specifically the early extension, goes through the body motions perfect. There's a ton of different feels to answer your question. There's no one answer. There's a lot of different feels. That lays it out in sequence. Those uh, masterclasses, we do that because of questions like this, so it lays it all out. All, everyone who's a member of CoronaGolf.com for that 39 bucks, by the way, where you can post your swing videos in, which I'm telling you is the most important thing for me to help you, you get access to all those masterclasses for free. So keep that in mind. If you're not on CoronaGolf.com, you get access to all those, all our masterclasses that we ever do for free and the live lessons and me watching your swing and Mary. You guess a lot of you guys don't know what Mary looks like yet. Um, do you have a drill from a... In the pre-shot routine, when do you make your final grip and how do you check that grip is good? Yeah, that's different for different players. Samuel. There's no one stock thing. For me, if I'm back here, let's say I'm going out towards like uh, one of these flags. I would be back here in my pre-shot routine. I do two practice swings. One, kind, And I'm feeling whatever I'm feeling. Right now I'm feeling chest turn and arm deeper on the way back. So for me, I'm feeling chest turn, arm deeper, half swing, rehearsal. And then I'm trying to feel it into a full swing just to gain a feel. I go back towards the setup. Here. Now I have the club in my right hand only. I walk up like this, still right arm only. Align my club face first, still right arm only. Now I put both hands on, set my feet, one waggle back to the ball, one waggle back to the ball, and then I hit. And that's how I hit every single shot I have, whether it be driver all the way through full swing wedges. If I'm closer to the green, it's wedges. I might change that routine up a little bit, but that's how I uh, would do it. So right hand for me all the way up, put the grip on late. Some players do grip back here and kind of keep it on. I think that's fine. Just we got to find whatever works best for you. Is that Clive? Clive, I like that. Uh, while while following your exercise to fix top shots, I discovered that if I step through, I get a much better weight transfer contact. Are there any downside things to look out for if I play like this? The one issue that you would look for if you do a step through is your upper body moving too far forward with your lower body, um, which would potentially get you steeper. Now, if you have had contact issues and you're getting thin shots, you maybe had a low point too far back and that moving forward's helping you. You might be um, releasing the club too early and then moving forward's helping you with that. Um, so that all depends. If you think about it like this, if I got a ball position that's back here, let's say I'm like this. If I stayed back, if I kept my body way back here on the right, what's the only way I could hit that ball solid? I'd have to have a lot of shaft lean. I'd have to have a lot of left wrist flex. If I, have, if I dump this, if I release it too early, and I move my upper body forward, I can at least hit the ball. You see that there? The more I stay back, the more I have to have my handle forward to play good golf. The more my body goes forward, like you might be early releasing it, and then you're getting there by shoving your body forward. So um, just kind of all depends. The wrist would be your upper body leaning too far forward, getting too steep. But again, I'd have to see your have to see your swing to say for sure. I'm telling a lot of you guys that are on here, if you join on there and post your swings, I could literally look at them for the first time, identify exactly what your priorities are, what you should be working on probably for the remainder of the year. It's 39 bucks. You can cancel whenever you want. I guess like a no brainer. Okay, Josh, Eric, can you talk about where you look when taking a swing, specifically the back swing? I tend to stay fixed in a place and take less of a turn as a result. Can you talk about where you look when taking a swing, within so the back swing, I tend to stay fixed? Yeah, I, in terms of where my eyes are at in space, I think most players, like it's like driving for me. Like if I'm here like this, my eyes are on the ball the whole time, but I'm like not really looking at it. You know what I mean? It's like when I'm driving, my eyes are on the road, but I'm not like really looking at the road. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm like, does that make sense? I'm looking at the road as I'm driving, but I'm not like looking at it. I don't like notice the details of it. If I'm up here, like my eyes are on the ball the whole time on the way back or on the way through, but I'm not like, not like looking at it. You know what I'm saying? But your eyes are, your kind of vision should be down towards the golf ball. Hopefully that helps that. Uh, Mark, thanks. You are welcome. Roger, hi, hello. Jeremy Lowe, can you demonstrate the Matthew Wolf swing for us? I don't know if I can, but I'll give it a shot. Wolf to me looks like he goes way down this way, right? Almost like here. I don't know if I could open as much as him. So he's kind of like this. Left toe like this. Yeah, that was not bad. I don't know if that looked like it on the way back, but felt loopy um, to me. It's crazy. It's, you watch him and I'm almost like, oh man, sometimes he's going to get some big misses with it. But my gosh, is he a great player and hits it a freaking mile. 
and has good control of the golf ball. It wasn't like he was missing all over the place. You notice those guys that have a lot of speed, they all hit fades, you know, fades off the tees, easier to control. Uh, let's see, can you go over the downswing pivot, keeping trail hip back while lead hip moves back also? Do you advocate a squatting motion or what do you recommend to leave room for the arms? Yeah, so downswing pivot, there's a lot to go over. I don't know if I can cover that all here. I don't know exactly, Bill, what you're looking for, but in terms of the left hip or right hip, um, we did a video this winter called, I want to say it was like two feels for rotation where I talked about like the, the right hip getting higher in transition and feeling a crunch like this, getting your right shoulder lower with right side, but also getting your right hip higher. If I pull my right hip up and back, that automatically makes my left hip go where? Back, my hips go together. If my right hip goes down and forward, my left hip goes up. So if I want in transition, my lead hip to go down and around, that means I want my right hip to go up and forward, right? They go together. If my right hip goes down, my left hip goes up. If my right hip goes up, my left hip goes down. So if I want, whatever I want my left hip to do, I want my right hip to do the opposite. If I want my left hip down and around, I then want my right hip not to go down. I want my right hip to go up and forward, almost like I'm trying to go up this way. You see that there? Almost like I'm making a move like that, feeling a little bit of an oblique crunch as I work down. For those of you who slide too much, that would be a good feel. If you're someone who slices and you hang back with your hips, that's not a good feel. You wanna push too far forward. But if you're someone who slides too much, those can be, um, those can be really good feels. Um, Roman, you're welcome, my friend. Greg, what's the main tip that you have for short chipping? Set up to the ball properly would be number one. So most people I see in the schools now that we started doing those, um, and in, obviously teaching over forever, the, I see the same sort of stuff. Feet too wide, ball position usually too far back, hands too far forward, or something neutral there. Feet very close, heels almost touching, front foot flared a little. Ball should be inside the right thigh. Handle location should be just slightly forward. Face should be just slightly open. All of this, my body should be in one line. No tilt, no hips forward. This should be neutral here like this. So to get that first, shoulder slightly open. From back here, I wanna make sure that I'm gripping down enough. I'm closer to the ball. Notice the shaft's a little bit higher. Face a little open. I wanna make sure I'm on plane on the way back, not too far inside. And I wanna make sure that I have a little bit of chest turn on the way through. That would be neutral. Now, when you go shorter and you have to go finesse, you have some different options. You could do the putt chip where you take the handle, raise it way the hell up like this, open the face a little bit and do like a little putt chip. So I would go like here, take my putting grip, see how high the handle is and make like a putting motion, which will deaden how far the ball goes. That would be like a short uh, chip like that. It also depends on the lie. Like if you got real thick rough, you saw Bryson DeChambeau yesterday try and do the stab and the ball moved like an inch or two. Depends on your rough. You could do some of that as you start working back down too. You can do the putt chip. You can open the face more. I would make sure the face is open enough so you can make a big enough swing. I would use the bounce, not use so much leading edge. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot there. Uh, Greg, is taking your right hand out of the equation good? I don't think that's good or bad. It depends on who you're talking about. How are they using their right hand? What's their ball flight pattern doing? What else is going on in their swing? Do they feel their, their right hands out or are they actually taking the right hand out? So too many variables, I think, to say yes or no to that one. Greg, I think if I saw your um, full swing or chipping, I could help a lot easier. Eric, with my driver, I keep hitting really low, hard left, uh, hard hooking left shots. Any reasons why? So either your face is too shut dramatically or you have off-center contact. You probably, maybe your path is too far inside out too. Um, if you hit it dramatically towards the toe or the heel of the club, that could happen. Or your face is dramatically too shut. Face could be shut because the grip's too strong. Wrist conditions could be jacked up or too much form rotation. Um, I'd have to see to say for sure. Um, but you're looking at face and off-centered contact and probably making sure your path isn't so far inside out. I would make sure the face isn't too shut first. Then maybe spray the face, check off center contact number two. Robert, can you talk about grip strength? I recently started to grip with much less grip strength and feels I'm getting better release. Yeah, I think grip strength is, is um, kind of personal. I think there's one thing that's perfect. I have some really good players. I've heard really good players who grip it really, really tight. Other players keep it kind of loose. We did a uh, video on the non-negotiables of grip pressure, which basically said, hey, whatever you start with, keep it. So don't go light and then grip real strong or don't go strong and then grip real light. Whatever you do, kind of keep it a constant. And then probably a middle ground is safe for most people. You know, the general idea would be you can grip it as tight as you want with your hands, so long as your arms are loose. But you'll feel a point where you grip it so tight you don't have loose enough arms. But if you're normally super strong with your grip and then you loosen up and that works, that's, that's great. 
Uh, Alex, you are welcome. You are welcome. Let's see where I'm at here. Jeff, clarity on green side bunker shots. Body is open to the target line. Oh, okay. Body is open to the target line. Is the swing along the target line or shoulder line? Um, ball position is forward based on target line, but is about but is about sternum along swing line. Clarity on greenside bunker shots. Okay. Body is open to the target line. Is the swing along the target line or shoulder line? I know really good players who do it both ways. So there's no right answer there. Ball position is forward based on target line, but is about sternum. Yeah, that's about right. I think, um, Jeff, there's different ways to do it. What I would say as a stock kind of bunker shot would be, I like bunker shots that look like this. So feet are slightly open to the target line, very wide. I like the ball position probably just like... Again, yeah, basically where sternum is, but like you said, it's open relative to the target line. Face is open, shaft's pretty neutral, um, handle lower like this. This would be about normal from here. If I was doing from down the line, that would be more like this. So feet are a little bit left, face is more neutral. I like a swing pattern here that stays on plane or slightly outside, face open with cup. And I like it a little more down the target line compared to left. I don't like way open and way across too much side spin on it, low point uh, issues. I like a little bit more square with the feet, just slightly open, face open, and then releasing it a little bit more kind of shallow and down the line for a stock bunker shot would look like that. But there's different players. I mean, there's guys that I know that open more up and cut more across it, and that's cool. Um, I think more modern, like kind of more now, guys are more kind of square and down the line with it. Um, so that, yeah, that's what I would say for that. Always right in... Uh, always right with mid irons help start learn how to hit them left the ball is always going to the right your face is too open or your path is too far inside out or you're aimed right or your ball position is too far back i'd have to see to say for sure learn how to hit the ball left check the fundamental stuff first is my aim and ball position good could be literally that easy maybe your path is too far inside out change that or your face is too open if the ball is not curving to the right it's just straight to the right that's probably a path issue if it's curving to the right it's probably a face issue um, if you don't get that sorted, I, if I saw your swing, I could easily tell you what it was, but I have to see it. Gordonagolf.com. Jeremy, it's so hard to get that lead knee externally rotate again. Gastel, any tips? Yeah, I think um, we've done a couple different videos, Jeremy, on rotation. I think we just did four different fields for hip rotation. If you search my name in hip rotation, search my name in left leg um, rotation, all those sort of things. There's tons of drills in there. In our rotation master class, there's a bunch of drills on that. So if you go back and watch those videos, you'll see probably like three hours worth of my thoughts on that versus what I would say right now. Um, but definitely drills to do that. Um, yeah. I mean, if, if you're used to having an internally rotated lead knee during the downswing pattern, you're normally like this, it's definitely going to feel exaggerated. You got to keep in mind, it's not just the leg that's turning. Like this should be turning too. like your belly button and your core as you're doing your leg turns too. It's not as though your stomach stays here and just your leg goes around. That's not how it works everything should be opening as you do that on the way down. Maybe that might make it a little bit easier for you. Um, let's see. John, my ball flight is very high. John, who's John? Come on, man. My ball flight, maybe you're John. My ball flight is very high. Should I consider switching shaft flex from regular stiff? Yeah, maybe. Could be a um, club issue. Maybe your angle attack's too shallow. Maybe you have too much dynamic loft. Uh, maybe you have too much speed for your shaft. Maybe you have too much spin for your shaft. It really all depends. I'd have to see you swing to, to say for sure. But you'd be looking at club, angle attack, dynamic loft, speed, and spin uh, for that. Left hand low putting. Does either hand lead back and through? Very personal when we're talking about feels. What you might feel, Steve, leads. The next guy might say the exact opposite. And if we recorded and measured it, you might be doing the exact same thing. So what you should feel is very much individual. Um, I'd say probably more with left hand low probably with left hand low, you're feeling more of the left hand working, which is probably why you're doing that in the first place. But some guys might say, right, just like if you go claw style, you're probably feeling more of the lead hand working that than the right hand, uh, I'd say as a stock, but it's, it's kind of different for, for different people. Stacy, trying to shorten my stance too wide, can't get to my left side without moving my feet too much. What's a good setup? I would say, Stacy, it might not even be a problem that you're moving your feet too much. Most of the best players in the world, both male and female, move their feet a lot. So, Stacy, I'd have to see your swing to say, A, is that even a problem? B, if it is, what's it causing? C, what specifically should you do to fix that? I pro I would I'd usually, like, I don't know the last time I did a lesson where I made someone make their feet more quiet. It, like, never comes up for me. So, I, I, would, I would say it might not even be a problem. Uh, there's Mary. 
Kristen. Um, okay. Yes, he is a young stud. I don't know about eager to breed women, but the stud part we'll, we'll call. That's cool. Uh, I like that you left that. Um, do you actively externally rotate the right arm until release, or is it just a byproduct of you being in correct position? Yeah, I, I don't actively externally rotate my trail arm. I would say um, we, we did a we did a couple of videos on trail arm external rotation. If you look, if you search my name and um, external rotation or internal external rotation or shoulder, et cetera, or how the right arm works, I kind of talk more in detail about that. Um, not sure who said that one, but. Uh, but yeah, I talk more about that. If you search my name and shoulder, it depends on where you're at the top. If you are at the top and it's already externally rotated and your elbows are very close, then you don't really have to do much. It's probably just going to stay back in. If you're more internally rotated and you get the right arm out a little bit more like this, then on the way down, you, you might have to do a little bit more action there. It just depends on your pivot. You know, it depends on some people I've taught to try and actually feel external rotation and it worked well for them. Some people, not so much. Some people do it more through pivot. Some people do it more through that. There's a lot of different ways to do it. I would say you only need to feel as though you create external rotation if you're too internally rotated in uh, transition. So if you go up to the top like this and you're too internally rotated here, uh, then you might want to feel that to get back in front. That could also be because you're pulling the shaft too much, uh, too early from the top relative to your body uh, rotating. So it just really all depends. I don't think you have to do, um, I don't think you have to do that, but you, you can do it. A uh, ball between your elbows would be good for that too. If you'd like a smart ball to be able to do that. There, I've seen some guys do different drills. I can have some of the course Kings guys. I see do some, I've seen do some drills where they're trying to get that arm more actually rotated and, and, and do really well with that. So that's cool. Uh, let's see how good impact. I started to kind of jump up with my body. I'm getting away with it with the driver, but shorter clubs and struggling. Any idea why and had a fix? Yeah, definitely. If I saw your swing could fix that um, or tell you why, at least there be, there's a reason why you're jumping up. That's happening earlier in your swing. That's what you have to figure out you're doing something that's causing you to jump. I don't know what that is. That could be because you're too bent over at a dress. And if you start too low, you have nowhere else to go but up. That could be because you lose angle too quick and you're jumping up to not hit the ball fat. That could be from a lack of body rotation, just purely early extension. But I would say nine and a half times out of 10, there's something going on early that's causing you to do that. What I would say is if you watch our early extension masterclass, um, you'd see kind of all the feels that I would give you to, to fix that. But in there, we talk about, hey, there's a lot of shit that probably comes up that causes you to jump in the first place. We talk through the setup issues. We talk about potentially having lack of depth on the way back. We, if your face is too open, there's a lot of stuff that could cause you to jump. You have to make sure you figure that out first and correct those before I start telling you, hey, just feel like you go down more as you turn that right side, man. You got to fix whatever's going on earlier for it to like long-term be fixed. So I would check out our early extension masterclass if you haven't. That kind of guides you through the whole thing. There's some videos on YouTube too that that should help that. Uh, Roman, great show, Eric. Glad you made it. Thank you. We are as well. I'm um, hoping this outside deal works. Did you guys like the outside? I think it looks a lot better. Yeah. Mary definitely thinks it looks a lot better. Shout out to Bethlehem. We're at the Bethlehem Golf Club, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Our new little mat there. Uh, let's see. Hi, Eric. Great video about the left leg. Pretty cool. Had any other first try? Oh, the lesson. Yeah, yeah. He a good, a good player, too, you know. Um, very, very good, very good player. Uh, and thank you. Question, ball well below feet. What combo of things do you use to keep it from starting right and fading? Only aim feet, roll wrist, actively stronger grip. I would say with the ball below your feet, um, you know, there's a couple different options what you could do. If I had the ball too far below my feet, the one thing I have to factor in is that I'm farther from the ball. And so I might make up for that by gripping really high at the top. I might take extra club and do a three quarter swing. Like whenever I'm in a weird spot, whether it's a weird lie or I'm uphill, downhill, side hill, whatever, I, I a lot of times will just take more club, swing, shoulder, shoulder, chest, chest. You guys know I did those videos on distance control. If you come to a golf school or in person, I build that distance control system with everyone. Like, so meaning with my eight iron, I have a full swing distance, a shoulder to shoulder distance and a chest to chest distance. With my seven, I have the same thing. Eight, so I know how far the ball goes when I do that. I'll always just take more club. If the ball's below my feet, no big deal. Let's say it's an eight iron distance 160. I'll take a seven iron. Um, I might bend over a little bit more, right? Because the ball's below my feet. And then in swing, feel like I keep my chest down a little bit more on the way through it. But other than that, I'm not really making too many adjustments. Maybe a little more bent over, a little bit more club, shorter swing length to control it, say more bent over. And if it's a dramatic lie, then like middle of the green's always good. You know, I'm not chasing pins in that scenario. Uh, let's see. Mark, what are your thoughts on playing with a slipped or bulging disc? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I certainly don't have a, um, that's probably more of a doctor or 
yeah, or like a physical therapist um, kind of question. I would say if there's risk of injury, I would maybe take it a little easy and not go nuts. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm not going to offer a lot of advice in that mark just because that's out of my uh, expertise area. Uh, Jeremy, can you give us a little explanation of the process of how we can sign up and get an online swing evaluation cost, how we should film it up and down? So sure. So I was doing earlier this year and have in previous years done online swing analysis, like one at a time, you could do it. I do a swing analysis, give it back to you. Uh, I don't have the time to do it anymore. There's just too many people, not enough of me. So that's why we built golf.com so we can do it as a community and we could scale it and all help each other. Um, so the only way to do an online swing evaluation right now is through kagornogolf.com. That's how it will remain. Mary will put the link below. It's just kagornogolf.com. Um, but Mary will put it in there. There's two different formats on there. You can do it. One's a premium membership. It's $39 a month, which I think is ridiculously low. You get all of the site. You get all of the master class. You get the Facebook group. You can post swings up to once a month where you go ongoing feedback. Um, now, to, keep, to scale that, like I was doing $150 per swing analysis. That was 20 to 30 minutes. So it's $39 per month. That's it. You can post up to once a month. Plus you get the community and everything else. So that'd be the main option. Right now there's an elite option for 99 where you get a uh, more detailed analysis once every three months. I don't know that we'll keep that plan on there forever. Um, Cause again, one of me, lots of golfers. Um, so, and I, I think I found, I think Mary would agree and the, and the members would agree the Facebook group is, is serving it. Great. It's excellent. Yeah. And it's, it's how I can help everyone. So that would be the best, the best, um, best way to do it. Yeah. I don't know if anyone on the memberships uh, site is on here or can kind of speak to what they like or don't like. Um, but that would be cool. Uh, let's see. I aimed way left and rotated my left arm from the top. Just went right of the fair. Wasn't enough actually rolling. Seems consistent. Yeah. I, I don't, I'd have to see, I'd have to see the, the reality is I have to see you do it. Were you aimed correctly? Where was the ball position? Did you pick the right club? What's your normal swing errors? Is your grip bad? Do you have a bad backswing? Is your takeaway incorrect? Like I need to see all that to be able to say for you what you specifically should do. But as like a very general answer, that would be what I would do. That's the issue with some of these questions guys is a lot of it comes down to personal stuff, you know, like um, what you should do specifically in your swing depends on what you're currently doing. And there's no getting around that. The only way to really help is for me to see your swing. That will never change. It doesn't matter how good our videos get. doesn't matter what kind of technology we get. I need to see your swing or someone, whoever your coach is, needs to see your swing to give you specific feedback. That's why we built out the site. That's why the membership site works so good. That's why the Facebook group works so good. Is because if you asked me that question, I saw you doing, I could, I could give you an answer with no problem. Um, but I have to see it. Uh, making some good progress with the help from your early extension content. That's a beautiful thing. Thank you. Thank you for posting that. Uh, can you, I'm making some good, uh, progress with the early extension content too. Can you please explain how the trail leg moves in the start of the downswing? Sure. Uh, if you search my name and right leg, search my name and right leg, you'll, you'll find a 10 to 15 minute detailed explanation of this, but how the trail leg works is at setup. I take my normal setup. Both of my knees are bent over the balls of my feet, kneecaps over the balls of my feet. During the backswing, the trail leg straightens some. My right hip works up and back, my left hip down and forward. I lose some flex in my leg at the top. In the beginning part of the downswing, I regain the flex. By the time I'm at left arm parallel, both of my knees are back to normal. From there, my leg continues to rotate internally. My legs get closer together. I'm extending my leg, pushing off the inside, kicking my hips forward into the follow through. From this side, that is uh, kneecaps over the balls of the feet. I lose flex in my right leg. My left leg goes lower. My right leg extends up to the top. As I begin on my way down, my right leg regains flex. They get to about the same spot by left arm parallel. From there, I'm pushing off the inside, getting my legs to close together. Hips kick forward, extend the right leg into the follow through. But if you search right leg, you'll get a longer uh, version of that. Uh, Brad, to slow down my swing, should I consider pausing at the top of the swing in order to rotate my lower body first? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you want to, um, that works. Pause at the top. I like doing that to feel some things. The best way to slow your tempo down is to take whatever club you hit 150 and then with a full swing, hit it only 100 yards. So let's say I did, uh, let me grab a club here. Let's say this is my nine iron. So my nine, perfect. I have my nine iron like 155 now. If I did a full swing, let's say I hit a full swing 150. So let me do a full swing here. So let's say that ball goes about 150 yards. Now what I want to do to slow my tempo is I'm going to do a full swing, but now only go 100. So full swing, but only 100 yards. Okay, so that ball went probably 90. And now I'm going to do a full swing and make it go 110. So still full swing, but now 110. You see what I'm saying there? 
And that ball probably went, that ball probably went 110. And then I'd do a full swing, make it go 120, 130, 140, 150, and find a range there tempo-wise that you like that gets you about your full playing distance. That's a really good way to slow your tempo down. Uh, hi, Eric. Hand release with driver is the same as the irons. Yes. Um, with the driver, the ball's up in the air. The angle of attack changes. Because the angle of attack changes, if, if you're hitting more up on it, that changes your path three-dimensionally. So with the driver, typically you got to swing a little bit more to the right than normal if you're hitting up on it. But generally speaking, the release pattern is the same. It's Again, that's it depends. It, if you have a lot of speed, it depends. It, it depends on your angle of attack. It depends on your release pattern, grip pattern, et cetera. But I would say as a stock, for most of you guys here, um, whatever you're trying to do with your release pattern, you should be trying to do with all your clubs as a stock answer. Again, that could be a little bit different per person. Francis, outside is nice. I think we think so too. Hopefully we found a solution here outside is nice you should listen to mary she is clearly wise every once in a while gilbert a fix for pulling the ball yeah um actually i don't know if we did a video titled how to fix your pull which means we probably should do that if you have pulls like over and over and over the primary root of that is path issue so if you have pulls in some way shape or form now you may have pulls in a path issue because your face is too open could be because your grip is too weak. You might have too much roll in the backswing. You might have bad wrist conditions. You might have aim issues. You might have ball position issues. You might have other stuff in there that I can't see to say for sure. But as a stock answer, if you go left and have gone left, you have a path problem, which means that your path during the downswing in some way, shape, or form comes too far out and across this way. You need to get it more working from in to out. How should you do that? We have a video called The Best Drill I've Ever Seen that has a 10 to 4 station. That would be excellent. We have another video called The Only Three Drills You'll Ever Need. That would be excellent, where basically you put a stick like this in the ground behind you, angled like this, and you have to swing underneath it during the downswing and swing from more inside. You would want to make sure you have enough depth on the way back and through. You need to change your path. We have shallow your downswing videos. We have draw videos. We have those drill videos. And we have a shallow downswing masterclass. And we have kagornagolf.com. You can see your swing. You can see exactly what's going on. Try to fix it. But I, I would say if it's pools, you can you can try and fix it on your own. Put those stations in. Uh, you need to change your path. The question's how. Um, let's see. No, ball below the feet still leaked right because I was using a five wood off the deck. Needed distance. Yeah, again, sort of the same answer for me. I need to see that to kind of give you any more specifics. Uh, when should you hinge your wrist on the backswing? You should be hinging your wrist. We did a video today on hinge and how hinging affects things. So you know, a stock answer is you should be hinging progressively the whole time. When you start your swing, there's some amount of hinge in your left hand. Let's say this is my setup position. When I take a setup, the butt of the club should be pointed basically at my belt buckle. So here's my setup, butt of the club's at my belt buckle. So there's some amount of hinge here. See that? This would be straight up and down, hinge. Now I'm gradually hinging from here I probably don't want a ton of hinge right off the bat from, from about here to my right leg, but really I'm gradually hinging all the way to the point when the club is parallel to the ground, it's even with my hands. Parallel to the ground, even with my hands. That's how much hinge. Not above it, not below it, even with my hands, right there. And then by the time I get to my right pec, I'm gonna be just wider than 90 degrees. Here's 90, I'm gonna be just wider than 90. And then by the time I get all the way up to the top, I should be somewhere in the range of a 90 degree-ish angle as a stock answer. How much you need to hinge or not depends on what you currently do. If you are too low and inside during the takeaway and or too much like this at the top, then you need to add some hinge early to get it back up and out. But some guys hinge too much. Like we have guys that post videos on the site and I, I, I have some people I'm telling, hey, you need to add hinge early. You, you don't have enough hinge, it's causing problems later. Other people, I'm like, oh my God, you have too much hinge, you need to take that out. So it just really depends on what you currently do, but you should be gradually hinging the whole time. I can't say whether or not you should feel more or less. You do have to understand there's a ratio between how much you hinge or not and your wrist conditions. So the more you hinge, the more your left wrist wants to go towards cupped. The more you unhinge, the more it wants to go towards flex. Hinge towards cupped, unhinge towards flex. So if you have too much cup and you want to get rid of that, you shouldn't be adding hinge. You should be taking hinge out. If you have too much bow and you want to fix that, which you probably shouldn't fix, you would in theory want to add more hinge. So hinge and flexion extension goes together. More hinge, more cup, less hinge, more uh, bow. Uh, do, 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 do. Shoulder, shoulder, three wood would have come up short for me. Okay, let's see. Can you quickly go over setting posture at address? I'm recording my swing. Can you quickly go over setting posture at address? Swing, it's off the glute to ground line, but some 
recording my swing and it's off the glute to ground line by some way. So when you record yourself from down the line, the goal is to be on the hand path. So if I take my normal setup and we're doing this here like this, the, the, the camera should be like basically over your hand path, should be basically over your toe line. So it'd be like on this sort of line. It shouldn't be back here on my glute. It shouldn't be on the ball target. It should be on the hand path line. And by the way, don't feel bad. When Mary and I shoot these videos, we double check these cameras half the time it's not right. When I shoot it, when I film a video, cause I've been doing it for a decade, I can get in the perfect spot. But for some reason we put the cameras up, it's harder. So it doesn't need to be actually perfect, but you're trying to get on the hand path. I always film at chest height. So both from face on and down the line, chest height, but on the, uh, on the hand path, I think answers that question. Um, yeah, can you quickly go over setting posture at address? So your setup posture at address should be something along the lines of, if I take my normal setup position, I want the um, back of my armpits. This is a George Gankus thing and it is perfect. Back of armpits over the balls of my feet are kind of where the end of the shoelaces are. I want my kneecaps over the balls of my feet. I want my lower back from the kind of butt to mid back to be pretty flat. I don't want arched out. I want it to be pretty flat here. I want, so this should be flat, the lower part of my back, but notice how my upper back is not on that. I'm not like this at a dress. I'm rounded a little at the top, armpits over the balls of the feet. With an eight iron, my arm should be basically straight down right in front of my toe line. And then the butt of the club should be on my belt line. If you watch PGA Tour checkpoints um, videos we did, I think I go over that in those um, as a refresher. And I know we have stuff on the site for that too. I think we did one posture video on YouTube like, a year or two ago. Uh, thanks. I hit my fairways well, except when I want a downhill lie. Uh, yeah, and Andrew, I would say if you don't shoot par or under, I wouldn't hit fairway woods on downhill lies anymore. And that goes for everyone. Fairway woods off the ground are hard. Not a lot. Um, it's just tough. It's just tough. You know what I mean? Like going to the gym and having a good workout, it's tough. There's no getting around it. Like working long hours, it's tough. There's some, some things there's no, there's no quick answer for. Fairway woods are tough. Downhill lie fairway woods, like like I, pretty good golfer, probably wouldn't even hit a fairway wood from a downhill lie. I would take whatever club you feel the most confident with and get it down. Now, if you're shooting under par, maybe we'll have a conversation on the side about that, but probably not a good idea. Three minutes, um, so let's rapid fire through the uh, rest of these. This flies by when we do this, man. Uh, Brian, just wanted to thank you for all your videos. You are very welcome. Drop my nine-hole league handicap from a nine to a three in just five weeks. That's beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Samuel, any drills for finishing with full extension and on the toes of the right foot as opposed to on the uh, ball of the right foot? Any drills for finishing with full extension on the toes of the right foot as compared? So any drills for finishing with full extension on the toes of the right foot as compared to the ball? Yeah, I, I would say, I think you kind of have your own answer there. What I would say is you got to go slow enough and short enough to be able to do it. Like if you know you're on the balls of your feet and you need to be on the toes, you need to get on the toes. You need to go short enough and slow enough to be able to do it. So if you're working on a finish position, you shouldn't be going full sweet, full speed, full swing. You say, hey, I want to get here. Like do somewhere you just take your normal setup, no backswing, and get onto that toe where you get a full follow through. Just from here to here, feel what that feels like. And hold that. Like can you hold that finish position literally for 30 seconds? Right? Hold that. And then do somewhere you only go take away to here. Like you're literally only going um, below hip high and try and hit that same spot. Now, when I did that, I only hit it 50 yards. I didn't add a lot of speed, right? And that's all you need to do. And then once you can do a takeaway length, just go hip high, rehearse rehearse the follow through. There's where I want to go. Okay, good. Brain knows where I'm going. Now I'm going to go hip high and just do the same thing. I hit that about 60 yards. So no need to go crazy with that with a nine iron. The greater majority of people I see when they do that, you guys are hitting the ball. You're swinging way too long and way too fast when you're practicing. It's like you learning a language and sprinting your way through learning that language or learning how to walk or drive. You got to go slow, go slow, record yourself, go shorter than you think. And you have to record yourself. Have I mentioned you need to record yourself? And if you're not using a phone, right? Like when I don't record myself, my swing goes off. If you, I would get a live view. If you guys haven't used a live view, we have a link in all of the description of all of our videos. Maybe Mary put one on here with a coupon code for a live view. You can watch yourself live as you see. I don't care if you use that, use a mirror vision, use your phone, whatever. Live view, I think, is the best one, but you need to be recording yourself, me included. Um, there's just no getting around that. Never will. Uh, let's see. Outside rapid fire is good. Thanks, Warren. Yeah, we, we like it. Hopefully, we found a solution up here. Um, I think we'll be back outside, hopefully. Uh, Andrew, you, you have to hit downward angle attack like an iron club to the speed. You need shorter club. It's not what you do. Yep, yep, yep. Gotcha. 
any drills for hitting up on the ball to drive. Since we have 30 seconds, um, is search my name and driver. Five tips to hit your driver farther. I'll go through that in uh, detail of the setup piece, the backswing, the downswing. And we have a distance product coming out in like two weeks um, that'll go through some of that as well. Uh, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Hi from Finland. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I think that's probably going to be it. I've seen an instructor that I really like to teach. I've seen an instructor that I really like teach no wrist radial deviation at the top of the backswing. What are your thoughts on that? Love it because if you don't hinge, what does that give you the best chance to do? Be flat to bowed. If I have no hinge, it's really hard to be kept with no hinge. So the less hinge I have, a radial deviation, the more flatter boat I'm going to have, even on the way down. You can have really, you could be completely unhinged here and have good bow and have really good shaft lean. Check that out. That's completely unhinged right there, right? Unhinged. So it's like I'm casting. Now, what if I have really good bow? What happens? Boom. I can still have really good shaft. I don't have to have a lot of hinge to have shaft lean hit the ball solid, but I do need, um, I'm sorry, I don't need a lot of hinge to get shaft lean hit it solid, but I do need the bow to do that. Um, that's going to be all she wrote. Rapid fire. I'm happy we're back. Mary's happy we're back. Outside work good. I genuinely mean for a lot of you guys, man, check out cornergolf.com. I can help you guys get better. I need to see your swings. Um, so I hope that some of you guys go on there. And, um, and I know that you'll enjoy it. I know that I'll be able to help you identify priorities and priorities that you're probably going to have for the rest of your life, right? Not just this month. And uh, if I can see your swing, I, I can answer those questions better. And uh, I hope you guys are there. We do have that product out, like I said, with a distance product coming out in two weeks, how to hit your irons and driver farther. Some of you guys haven't checked out other master classes. A lot of the answers of your questions lie within those master classes. It requires practice. Okay, you got to put some time and effort into it, but there's answers to all of those things. And all of them, like everyone who's a member of coronagolf.com, you get free access to all of the master classes. Um, so hope everyone had fun. I appreciate you guys being here. We had a good turnout. Um, next week we'll come back. We'll keep doing this every Monday. Um, hopefully the outside, the weather stays good. And um, that was fun. Thank you guys. Hope you guys have a good week. And uh, Mary and I will talk to you next week.